We didn't have title slides last year, so I had my own title slide. Uh, uh, I'm Vincent Fink. As you can see, uh, this is just a little montage I did of the three uh, big show pieces. Last year I had the uh, catbirds up at the top, and this uh, black and white illustration was uh, those two were last year's selections. This year I had the piece that I'm going to give you a little walk through the process of, which is entitled Iteration 50 Reflection Pool. You might have noticed it as the one with the big rhino out there. And you can see it's uh, geometric reflection there at the bottom. So um, the story of that piece actually comes from a piece before it. Um, iteration 14 was my first rhino. And actually, when I had finished that piece, it was just a, a strange moment because then I had people coming to me and saying, oh wow, did you, uh, did you know about the, the West African black rhino had just become extinct? And I did not know that. So just the synergy of those two things happening at the same time without me knowing. Uh, and then I guess uh, just noticing um, mankind's lack of uh, respect, I guess, for that species really hit home for me. Um, but so anyways, um, I'm going to show you some of the process of that first piece. Uh, every great idea comes from a fleeting moment of inspiration, I think. And so it's important to document those quick ideas before they're gone into the ether. And so um, you got to sketch them out. Uh, this was actually a secondary sketch of that piece. After I'd already kind of gotten a solidified idea of what I wanted, I kind of refined those ideas. So this is the refined sketch of what that one was to be. Um, and then here is the final product of the first Rhino piece, entitled Iteration 14, Rhino Running Through Fields of Energy. And uh, one might postulate those are uh, metaphysical fields of energy that he's running through as well. As you have the uh, fully manifested three-dimensional version at the bottom, then a more basic 3D version floating above him, and then a even more basic kind of 2D plane version of him. So that went over really well. Uh, it sold, and then uh, I had a, somebody who really wanted another Rhino painting, so he commissioned me, uh, and we put our heads together, and so we started that process over again. So there, this is actually the the very intro process to all, well, not all, but a lot of my creations, uh, the ones that are thought out, and so that these are these are actually the basic sketches. They're just little thumbnails, uh, you know, about the size of a phone. I try not to go any bigger than that because then you wind up putting too much detail in there. Uh, so just playing with angles and things and random strange ideas like the bottom left, like I don't know where that's going, but we'll see, maybe that'll become something. So this is, uh, again, now taking that idea and fleshing it out a little bit more. This time I really wanted to make my rhino like more rhino-like. I, I wasn't incredibly pleased with my first geometric rhino, so I wanted to make this one more true to form. Then uh, I, you know, source the internet because I don't have a pet rhino, and uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, so and I don't really, don't really like the whole zoo scene. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I gather photos, um, take it into Photoshop, you know, kind of play around with lighting and things like that, try and just get the thought process out of the way as much as possible before I actually start. Because if I don't do that, I usually wind up killing myself and redoing things. Um, so anyways, this is the actual first uh, painted stage of it. And as you can see, a lot of that planning went out the window. <laughs> uh, from the, the background especially, I totally changed the, the scene uh, and dropped the sky in there. So that added a lot of problems. Uh, but now I'm going to kind of just punch through a few of these and you can kind of see how they flow. And that's pretty much how the painting went along. I just, you know, the, I just slapped the paint on the canvas and it fell into place like that. I'm just kidding. It took about two months to do that. So. Um, but you can see actually in those last stages, just some of those last minute details really kind of just make it happen. The ripples in the water and the, and the lighting effect. Some of those uh, details that you may not notice until you look up close. This is actually just in progress close-ups. And this is a, a lighting uh, simulation I did. Uh, I, don't, I didn't have any 3D software on hand, so I did the, the old school way. Uh, I set up a light and an object to mimic what I was creating. Uh, our timesheet, every good artist keeps track of all the hundreds of hours that he's uh, spending away, and so you can make sure that you bill your clients accordingly. <laughs> um, and now I'm just going to show you a few of my older pieces real quick. 
And this is uh, iteration three, survival. Uh, as you can see, an ongoing theme here is the geometry. Uh, he's actually kind of, chameleons normally change color. This one's changing shape to mimic the ominous octahedrons in the background. Uh, this one is a more recent one, iteration 44. And same thing, uh, Fox is kind of just made up of these uh, geometric elements. Uh, and by the way, has anybody here heard of the phrase sacred geometry? Okay, so we got one or two of you. Few. Um, so that's something that I like to play around with a lot too. And if you're not familiar, I highly encourage you doing a Google search tonight on sacred geometry. Uh, it's a very fascinating uh, side of, of our existence. It, uh, when you think about it, geometry actually kind of just encompasses everything, every atom and every person, cat, dog, platypus, you know, we're all made of the same stuff. And so if you also like those kind of concepts, uh, you might be interested in my uh, screen printing as well. I, I draw and screen print t-shirts and I try and incorporate all these scientific concepts in them as well. And to just kind of spread that love for uh, art and science and the fusion of that together. So if you like that, check out InsectPink.com or .506.com for the brand. And uh, thank you for your time.